you've been one somebody you kind of kept yourself uh, right where you were with your S&P price target still at 50 50 you also put out a new note yesterday calling for a 10 percent correction is some of that narrowness in the market is that one of the factors that you think is going to lead us to that correction. Frank, that is just one of the factors. I sort of look at this market kind of like my kid's car when he comes home from college and you see all these warning lights on the dashboard when you get in and take it for a spin. Uh, the breadth of the market is certainly concerning. When you look at the number of stocks that are making new highs, you also look at the number of stocks that are above 50 and 200-day moving averages. Frank, all those things are still at very weak readings despite the market moving to all-time highs. Combine that also with the fact that we've got 10-year bond yields that have been inverted now for over two years. You've now got oil prices that are starting to move higher. And then you can also sort of look at the divergence that's happening just on the number of advancing versus declining issues compared to the market pushing the new highs. Put some of these things all together, Frank, and it's like we've got a number of warning lights on that I just don't think investors should uh, ignore at this point in time because, frankly, the repair bill later could be a lot higher. All right, so you're saying the warning lights are on, the car is still going, but the repair bill may be higher later on. I want to touch on bond yields. I've actually been talking to a few traders and portfolio managers, and they say that may be something that's an unappreciated uh, risk in the market. Over the last two weeks, bond yields have risen pretty considerably, about 20 basis points, and the market's just kind of moved sideways towards then. Generally, the markets, they're pretty good when bond yields go down. You, you see a reaction, stocks go up. But when they move up, it feels like the markets take more time to digest. Do you agree with that assessment that the market's still digesting this upside move? I agree, and I think it is probably one of the bigger risks out there because the correlation between bond yields and the S&P have been uh, inversely uh, correlated for quite some time. And at this point in time, with bond yields working their way up toward 445, there is a concern. You start moving north of 450 and then ultimately back toward the highs we had seen late last year. I think the market would then come back and sort of reassess uh, what the bond market is telling us. Bonds typically lead equities, Frank, as you all know. And uh, if bond yields start creeping up north of that 450 or back toward those uh, uh, last fall highs, it's probably going to suggest that the rate cuts that the Fed has been thinking about and inflation remain sticky. And therefore, uh, any sort of reduction in the number of rate cuts investors are expecting would probably lead okay. to an uh, adjustment to equities. You know, Greg, by the way, I just want to remind the audience, uh, we're going to hear from Sarah Eisen just coming up a bit later in the show. Jay Powell speaking at an ECB forum later today that could have an impact on bond yields. You mentioned anything north of 4.5. Uh, that could spell some trouble for equities right now. Again, we're sitting at 4.45. Um, I actually want to go to some of the, the stocks that you're, you're bullish on right now. Uh, you gave us some of your tactical picks for this upcoming week. A lot of it's dominated by tech. You had Amazon in there, Alphabet in there. But you had one in there I want to ask you about. Dutch Brothers, consumer discretionary name, coffee chain. I don't drink coffee. I haven't heard it. I have it had it, I should say. But I've heard great things about it, Craig. I don't know if you've actually had the coffee. But right now, why are you bullish on a consumer discretionary name that's run up more than 30 percent year to date as we continue to hear the consumers under pressure? In fact, that was even a theme of the ISM report yesterday that showed contraction that the consumer is under pressure. So why consumer discretionary right now? Well, Frank, like you, I don't drink coffee either, but I look at a lot of charts. And when I look at the chart of Dutch Brothers, what I'm seeing is is a pretty nice trend reversal, a nice looking base. And uh, it's a pretty constructive looking chart. Now, I'm not sure it's as much about the spending uh, concerns with consumers at this point in time. I think it's more of a unit expansion story for Dutch Brothers at this point. And they do have some sort of unique product offerings that seem to be doing better than what you're seeing with Starbucks, which has got such a large installed base other otherwise. So I think investors and consumers are looking for unique differentiated products. And it seems like Dutch Brothers is bringing that to the beverage choices for a lot of consumers.